Now that we've seen why randomized experiments are magic from a few different perspectives, we'll move on to more general identification beyond the backdoor adjustment for the rest of this lecture. And the first is the front door adjustment. Let's quickly recall the backdoor adjustment. So if we're looking at P of Y given T here, we have non-causal association flowing along these backdoor paths. But we can fix that by blocking those backdoor paths by just conditioning on W2 and C, for example. So we can get identification in this graph just using the backdoor adjustment. But what about this graph, where W is unobserved, so we can't condition on W here? We can't block that backdoor path. Can we still identify the causal effect of T on Y if this is the causal graph and we have an observed W? It turns out that we can using the front door adjustment. So in this graph, we have causal association flowing along the directed path T to M to Y, and we have non-causal association or confounding association flowing along the backdoor path T to W to Y. And the intuition for the front door adjustment is that because we have this M here, and all of the causal association that we're interested in flows through M, if we just focus on M, then we can isolate the causal association. And we'll see specifically how we'll do that in this part of the lecture. The big picture is that we'll do this in three steps. The first step is to identify the causal effect of T on M. Then we want to identify the causal effect of M on Y. And finally, we'll combine these two to identify the causal effect of T on Y. We'll take this step by step. So the first step is to identify the causal effect of T on M. That means we want to take this quantity P of M given do T and somehow turn this to, into an expression that doesn't have do operators in it. Well, it turns out that in this graph, there are no backdoor paths from T to M. That's because Y is a collider on the path T to W to Y to M. So because the collider Y blocks that backdoor path, we have that this is just equal to P of M given T. That's all there is to step one. Now in step two, we want to identify the causal effect of M on Y. So the causal quantity of interest is P of Y given do M. Here there is a backdoor path from M to Y. The backdoor path is M to T to W to Y. But fortunately, we can block that backdoor path by conditioning on T. So we can use T as a sufficient adjustment set and just use the backdoor adjustment here. In the last slide, we actually got identification via the backdoor adjustment with the adjustment set being the empty set. So you can think of the first two steps of the front door adjustment as just two applications of the back door adjustment. And then in the final step, step three, we just combine what we got in step one and step two to identify the causal effect of T on Y. So the causal quantity of interest here is P of Y given due T. To get this, we start with the causal association flowing from T to M that we got in step one. And we chain this together with the causal association flowing from M to Y that we got in step two. And then because this first one here, P of M given do T, is a distribution over M, we have to sum over all the values that M can take on. So we have some value of T here that we're interested in measuring the causal effect of. And what we do is we look at the effect of T on M. So there's some specific value of M here that then we look at the effect of that M on Y, and we're chaining those two together. And then because this distribution of M given due T, it's a distribution, we have to sum over all values that it could take on to sum out that randomness. And then we actually know what each of these quantities inside this sum is equal to when we get rid of the do operators from steps one and step two, it's just this. We have a t prime on the inner sum here to distinguish it from this t, which matches this t here. So that's the only reason we have t prime here. And that's actually the front door adjustment. So 
the front door adjustment is that if we have that T, M, and Y satisfy the front door criterion and we have positivity, then we have this identification equation here. And what is the front door criterion? A set of variables m satisfies the front door criterion relative to t and y if the following are true. 1. m completely mediates the effect of t on y. So, in other words, all causal paths from t to y go through m. m is a full mediator of the effect of t on y. 2. There is no unblocked backdoor path from t to m. This was key in step 1. And 3. All backdoor paths from M to Y are blocked by T. This was key in step 2. If you want to see a full proof of the front door adjustment using the truncated factorization, then check out section 6.1 in the course book. The question for this section is, what is the intuition for why the front door criterion gives us identifiability?